Hello, everyone. My name is Layla Stedman. Um, I had the pleasure of working with my teammates, Sarah, Carolise, Ellie, and Tina and Martin this weekend. Um, thank you all for our hard work. It was really an enjoyable experience. We got to work on the ECOG hand pose estimation data analysis project. So as a bit of an introduction, in terms of the experiment and the data set we received and how we understood it, the general um, experiment was that they were using epileptic patient data, but these epilepsy patients actually had uh, ECOG intracranial or grids right on their cortex, um, and these were implanted. And then these patients were instructed to do 90 trials of rock, paper, scissor gestures. And these gestures had a two second um, cue to do the gesture and then a two to three second latency of a black screen between different gesture cues. And in terms of the data, we received 60 ECOG channels on our data set, as well as five glove uh, detecting channels. And with this data, our overall goal was, of course, to process and classify this data with as high of accuracy as we could. But we wanted to also be creative and take it one step further. And we wanted to see if we would be able to visualize these classifications then with a 3D model or a prosthetic. Uh, and we'll get into that a bit later as well, which actually links into our, our robotic reference of our na team name terminators. Um, and then just down here below, you'll see this is our general logic flow that we started out with. This was our first step was getting together as a team and just deciding that we would kind of follow suit with the paper and the general data processing steps of pre-processing, feature selection, and then classification and visualization as well. So to go into a bit of our pre-processing at a high level, um, we are able to do a bandpass channel filtering from just to isolate that 100 to 300 hertz band. And then we also did a notch filter of the fifth order. And this was specifically as uh, the paper illustrated, it was really beneficial in removing that power interference. Um, and then we also did a whitening filter of the 12th order. And both of these images are shown on the right in terms of our graphs. Um, something else that we were able to do before we even did our feature selection was we were able to uh, remove any of the triggered data and extract that. And then we were able to epoch our data as well. And then we wanted to reduce the spatial dimensionality of the data um, and use our, our feature reduction and feature selection algorithm. So we tried a couple of those and I'll go into that in a bit. We tried common spatial patterns as well as the Riemann covariances. And this is a great way to illustrate, um, we took a, a power spectral density graph right before we did the filters as well as after. And as you can see, it's an average of all of our channels. And um, this was really, really reassuring during the process for us because we were able to visually see that, um, that kind of downward spike that you see, um, the power interference as well as other noise was cleaned up through those, those filterings. All right, and then moving on to our, our uh, next steps, we did a cross-fold validation across different models and feature selection algorithms. And um, this speaks to our feature selection with the common spatial pattern, as well as the Riemann covariances, and then our different models that we decided to use because we really wanted to see what was best uh, for ourselves. And as you can see on the bottom right, we found that the best um, combination was actually the Riemann with the support vector machine. All right, next before I go into this video, um, which harks back to our team name, um, this was our, our last goal, really the fun part of our project, the most fun. Um, we wanted to see if we could then extend this and with our predictive model, uh, be able to not only get this array, of course, of the different types of um, integers that represented different hand gestures, where one represents the rock, two represents scissor, and three paper. Um, but then we wanted to see if we could communicate that with a prosthetic hand that we had on hand. And um, we actually were able to do that successfully. So I'll go ahead and play this video. And actually, one thing I want to mention before I do as well is that you'll see it'll be just the four, first four of this array. And you'll actually see scissor, scissor, uh, rock, and then paper. But the two scissors will look like one motion because we weren't able, we didn't um, implement that rest state in between. And then after we completed our project, we just want to take a moment and really reflect on what we had learned and any of those major takeaways. 
And um, as we mentioned earlier, we were able to try different classification algorithms and combinations with feature reduction methods. And we found that our Riemann covariances perform best at the feature selection uh, level. And then we also found that there was still a lot of room for improvement in terms of signal filtering and processing. Um, on the right, there's also a graph that shows the different number of PCA components that we tried out and how that um, actually reflects in terms of test accuracy. And we wanted to visualize that just so that we could see, you know, is there a common pattern? And if we continue to increase, will that also continue to increase accuracy? And what we learned as illustrated is that there is an initial jump. However, then it kind of stabilizes in comparison. Um, so that was an interesting find. We found also that more search research would be necessary to confirm that the PCA and LSTM combination would be able to work correctly for the hand closed classification. And those are the major, major reflections from our project. Um, and that pretty much sums up what we were able to learn this weekend. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for the nice presentation. Angelica, any questions for the team? Yes, so I was wondering, so how could you eventually deal with the problem of having a good comparison in terms of the meta parameters that you need to also tune for all these parameters, uh, for all these methods? Sure. Um, so honestly, I am more of a neuroscience background, and I think that was one of the things that was best about our team is we're all still learning. So even that is actually something I haven't pondered yet and something I would need to have more thought on. Um, but in terms of our other team members, they'd probably even be able to speak better to that uh, with their neural network and their um, neural signal processing backgrounds. But definitely something I'd like to look more into. Thank you. Okay, great. I'm sure Arnold Schwarzenegger will be happy to get your hand. Thank you very much for the presentation. Um, Thank you. This was Team Terminators 13.